Hello everyone and welcome to a fun new series here on the MI Gardener channel. It's going to be a three part series so hopefully you all are going to enjoy and if this goes over really well we might have a fourth part or a fifth part or who knows because I've noticed that there are a lot of terms that gardeners throw around and beginning gardeners or even people that are in their first or second year of gardening they tend to get a little overwhelmed by all of the terms that you know us people that have been gardening for a long time throw around such as what we're going to talk about today which is germinate, laggy, and soil amendment. So those are the three terms that we're going to talk about in this episode, and there'll be more in the other episode. I wanna to stick to about three or four to keep things quick and simple to not overwhelm you. So if you have your pen and paper ready, make sure to take notes, because these are going to be basically just definitions or examples of those. And I'm also going to have pictures to describe what I'm talking about to make it even a little bit more simple. So when it comes to the first term, which is germinate. Germinate, it is really nothing more than the sprouting of seeds. So if you've ever uh, basically put seeds into soil and watered, th that is germinating. Germination just means to sprout. So that's a really simple one. But I, I know that a lot of people ask me, what does it mean to germinate, you know? So that is that, is that. it's very, very simple. Then now the next word is leggy. Leggy is a little bit more difficult to describe, but you'll know it when you see it because a lot of beginning gardeners actually have this problem. Leggy seedlings or leggy plants or it became leggy. Legginess is the term that is describing a plant that gets really, really long right after sprouting. So oftentimes you'll have that one seedling that'll sprout and the, the stem will just keep getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer, a lot like that picture. <laughs> and, and then they'll kind of get top heavy and fall over. Lagginess is not good by any means. Some small lagginess will typically always happen if you're starting seeds indoors or starting them in a windowsill. And that just happens because of the fact that when we have our seeds outdoors, the sun is so powerful and so bright that a seedling doesn't have to stretch for light. Imagine it as basically stretching for light. If you don't have your lights close enough, your seedlings are going to go, please come closer. And then they're going to start stretching, equaling the lagginess. Whereas if you have your lights pretty close, the, the seedlings don't have to stretch. They can just go, <laughs> they can just soak up all that goodness and they don't have to go anywhere for it. It comes right to them. And that's one of the benefits of starting seeds outdoors is you will rarely have leggy seedlings. But as gardeners, we like to start our seeds indoors. And that happens usually in the case of uh, a really bright windowsill or, or artificial lighting, like a compact fluorescent or an LED or whatever you're using. And that, that oftentimes leads to a little bit of lagginess because there's, we can't be perfect. So uh, nothing beats mother nature. So that's what lagginess is. Now another thing is with lagginess, if you get some really laggy seeds, like really, really laggy seeds, just restart when it's warm enough to start the seeds outdoors. I know it's sometimes discouraging to admit that we can't start seeds indoors and not everyone has the materials or the ability to. That's fine, that's totally understandable. And I don't think anyone would hate on you for actually starting your seeds outdoors because let's face it, until you can actually grow your seeds outdoors, they, they can't go outdoors anyway, so you're really only getting a tiny bit of a head start of a few weeks. So you're not all that far behind. Now another thing is that oftentimes we just, we really like to say, well this is a plant that sprouted. This is what hurts. If it gets really, really laggy, just call it quits and throw those seedlings away because they're just not going to grow well. They're going to be very top heavy and the problem is, is that when the stem gets that long, oftentimes you can't do much with it. You can bury a little bit of the stem, but it's always going to be laggy and it's going to affect the growth later on. You're going to have an inferior plant. So when it comes to lagginess, it's a pretty big topic because it affects not only the current plant, but the future plant. And uh, there's a lot going on. So hopefully that helped you out with the term laggy. Now the next term is soil amendment. Soil amendment is one of those things that people say, man, I gotta amend my soil. I gotta, I gotta amend things. Well, when you amend your soil, it's basically making soil better. So if you're, if you're amending a constitution, you're making something better for the whole. So 
you're amending the bed and you're you're basically fixing something that was not there before. So a soil amendment can be anything that makes your soil better. One of my favorite ones and the most common one is compost. Compost is a great example of a soil amendment. Oftentimes our soil is too heavy in clay. Maybe there's too much sand. Well, if you add compost, it's going to fix all of those problems and you can really never add too much compost to your garden beds because compost is kind of that, that perfect soil. So that is an amendment. Another one is rock dust. Rock dust amends your soil with lots of micronutrients and trace minerals that were found hundreds of thousands of years ago that have been removed from the soil from traditional gardening practices or wind erosion or just water washing over the soil for thousands of years, it gets depleted. So all of that ends up in a source, they mine that source, turn it into a, uh, a rock dust that you can add to your garden. That's also a great soil amendment. Another one is green sand. Green sand is again, just another mined rock. They pulverize into a powder. It has a few less uh, micronutrients than like a rock dust or a, a glacial rock dust or an azomite, but it still has a lot of trace, min trace minerals and you can typically find it at a little more cost-effective price. Another soil amendment is sand. Oftentimes people don't think of sand as being a soil amendment. However, if you have very heavy clay soil and you, can't have ac and you don't have access to a lot of compost to break up that clay, one thing you can add is sand. Sand has just a larger particle size, so it will fit inside of all of those smaller clay particles, and the clay will actually break up and become looser. And so that's another soil amendment because you're amending the hardness of your soil. Because if your soil is too hard, your roots can't get down into the soil and, and find all of the oxygen and nutrients and water that they need to survive. So you're making something better in that sense. Now another thing that is amending soil, and the very last one that I'll talk about, is mulch. Mulch is actually a soil amendment, believe it or not. When you mulch the top of soil, there are different microorganisms and, and worms that can come up through the soil, and they will actually start to decompose that mulch layer that you're adding. That can be mulched leaves, mulch, mulched grass clippings, coffee grounds, even wood chips can be a mulch, anything that covers the soil. And that could actually be a fourth word if you really want is mulch. What is mulch? I just kind of described it. It's anything that covers the soil to prevent weeds and stuff from coming up. But it also is a soil amendment. So it's kind of a cool kill two birds with one stone type of thing. So hopefully that helps. I really hope that you all will definitely uh, continue to follow this series. Submit some ideas if you have any words that you're just not understanding, and hopefully I'll be able to cover them in another episode. I really thank you all for tuning in for this episode here on MI Gardener. Hopefully this helped out in some way. I would highly recommend checking out the next series we have. It's going to be a pretty good one, uh, or the next episode in this series. <laughs> Correction there. And I will talk to you all later. This is Luke from MI Gardener. Hoping you all are growing big or going home. I'll catch you later. See ya. Bye.